Hello and welcome back Super Mums. In today's video we've got an interview with Elizabeth McLeod from Keys to Change Your Life. We're going to be having a look at why social anxiety creeps up when we become mums and she is going to be sharing some amazing ways for you to get around this whole issue that is really stopping you from being yourself. So here we are on this lovely sunny day and I'm speaking to Elizabeth McLeod. So we are talking all about being yourself and we're delving more into the whole social anxiety issue that seems to creep up when you become a mum. Great fun, something else to deal with as a mother. <laughs> so I'm going to hand it over to you just to introduce yourself, tell us a bit about who you are work-wise and who you are as a mum. Okay, well hello, lovely to meet you. Um, I'm Elizabeth and um, I have two boys who are now 11 and 13 and I'm um, originally I'm a teacher and now I've trained to be a mindset coach um, looking at different ways to help people showing people that by making simple changes in their thinking then they can become more happier and more joyful in everyday activities using elements from the law of attraction so I well resonate with this subject because I had quite a bit of anxiety <laughs> issues when I had my children and I'd love to be able to share some tips and ways to, to, to overcome different things now with you. <laughs> um, so we're going to dive, dive sort of straight in um, with what is social anxiety um, and why is it that it, it creeps up when we become mothers? What is it that suddenly triggers people that have never suffered it with it before? I suffered with it a bit beforehand, so it wasn't surprising that I suffered with it afterwards. Um, but some people will have never had this kind of issue and suddenly they become a mum or even further down the line they might have been a mum for a while but maybe their kids start school and they feel like they suffer with it or the kid goes off to university and they suddenly yeah. realise they're suffering with it. Why, why is it? So what is it? And why is it that it creeps up in motherhood? Yeah, I think it's just the general change, isn't it? The change from one life event to another that you're not necessarily expecting. And quite often, if, if new mums have worked right up until they've, they've had their babies, then not only have you got the, the challenge of having a new baby to look after and all that entails, you've got the challenges of, well, well you're at home and, and what, how do you fill your day? I remember from being a, a full-time teacher to then being at home, I was thinking, people were saying, well, just go to the shops. And I was thinking, well, I normally zoom around the shops in two seconds flat. Now I've got to go around with the baby and pretend I enjoy it and make myself have a cup of tea. And it was just so different to anything I'd experienced before. And the, the pace of life slows down a lot when you've got a baby in some aspects because you're waiting for them to nap. You can't just say, right, we're gonna go out now. Um, we've got to do three jobs and go and see some people like you would do normally before you had a child. When you've got a baby, you've got to look after its needs and take time for them. So I think everything changes. And then you've got the big pressure you feel as a new mum of everyone's looking at you and are you coping and do you do you look all right? And, and then you've got the pressure of how you're actually feeling because some people can go through experiences and, and feel their health has suffered. I, I had that situation. And not only are you trying to deal with the newborn baby, one of my babies had colic for three months, so you're very sleep deprived. You're trying to cope with that. You're trying to look after another baby maybe at the same time a toddler would say or other children and other family members and you're sleep deprived and then you're trying to work out how to fit everything else in life i think there's a lot of expectations and then you've also maybe got the expectations of family members who are being really kind but maybe they would do things differently so you've got to work out maybe as a mother have the confidence to say okay this is what i want to do this is how i feel i want to connect with my baby um, and, and have the confidence to, to find your own path really. So I guess it's about empowering women, letting them realise that they have the choice. They can do what's right for them and their baby. And yes, listen to other opinions, but at the end of the day, they're the ones who are up with the baby at two, three, four, five, six o'clock at night, yeah. you know, to help to help them. So it's, um, it's a, I guess it's a space to say it's okay. We're all, you know, we've all been there and we're gonna help each other through, but you've got to decide for yourself how, it's okay to decide for yourself how you, you want to um, go move forward and cope with it. Amazing. So I found that a lot of people put, put up this sort of wall of, oh, well, I'm just shy. I'm just a shy person. And actually, yeah. when they look into it, they realise it's actually social anxiety, which is something you can not necessarily fix, but you can deal with it. There are 
there are things that you can do to make it not debilitating. So I always say I feel social anxiety, but it doesn't debilitate me. It's not a debilitating level. And so what are the obvious signs that this isn't just shyness and this is actually social anxiety creeping in? I guess it's that point where your your heart is going. I remember going to a toddler group that would be new to an area and you, you're struggling with a double buggy <laughs> through a single door trying to fit, make it fit. I'm sure everyone's had that experience. And then everyone just looks at you and you're thinking, hello, come and say hello. <laughs> and it's that fear of the unknown and it feels like everybody else knows each other when in fact they probably don't. They're probably all new as well. And it's trying to find a voice to say, hello, my name is and who are you? It's really difficult when you're feeling very, very, it's more than nervous, it's it's very unsure of yourself and underconfident and you're also anxious because is your child going to cry? Are you going to have to feed in front of everyone? Are you? Is there anywhere to change a nappy and if you've got a toddler how are they going to cope with the situation? So there's a lot of different factors coming in and to try and work out what it is you, you know, how you can help them with it. Um, so it's very You're thrown very into weird. a lot of new situations when you become yes. a mum, aren't you? It's it's yeah. like and a barrage of new yeah. things to deal with, and it's all unknown before. Maybe in you know going to work or whatever you were doing, you sort of knew what the steps were. You knew what was going to happen next. Whereas with a newborn baby. Well, are they going to cry? Are they not going to cry? Are they going to sleep? Are they not going to sleep? Are they going to fill their nappy and need a complete change? <laughs> Which we've all had. <laughs> Have you got changes of clothes for you and the baby? There's just it's so many different things. And at first, it's it's quite hard. I remember in hospital the first time my boy was sick, my baby was sick. I rang out of the cubicle and went, what do I do? What do I do? He's been sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, are you uh, doing the right, right place to do? Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I, I find I'm I'm not good with the unknown. I'm embarking on Thursday to a five five days five days camping festival with the kid. Uh, no, daddy, uh, it is with my church and it is a Christian festival, so I feel like it's it's a safe space to suddenly do this. But I have had at least I think four or five meltdowns about this now, and at least three moments where I've gone, "That's it, not going, not going." Yeah, so I'm, 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 I, I keep having to go, but the kid will miss out. The kid will miss out if I don't suck it up and do it. So you kind of got to get your get yourself through it. But new, new experiences and me, I love them once I'm there. But yeah. I do find it incredibly intimidating and the unknown. I'm a planner. I like to know exactly what's happening. I am not the person you want to throw a surprise party for. Yeah. Um, not not going to end well. <laughs> I think one of the ways we could help with this is I'm um, coming from a mindset coach looking at the law of attraction where like attracts like so what you focus on you tend to manifest in your life so if you're going to a situation like you with your child or somebody um, with a newborn baby they're wondering okay what's this situation going to be like what's the child going to do am I going to be able to find the toilet or different things that I need for, for the, the child um, maybe first of all a really really nice process is just to sit still with a cup of tea before you go and just work through in your mind how the day is going to flow so what do you need to take with you imagine you're taking it imagine you're getting in the car imagine you've got everything ready you've got activities for the child whoever old they are you've got food you've got water you know where you're going and you envision yourself driving along and then you envision yourself Okay, we'll get to where we're going, we've got to the festival and imagine people who you're going to meet and imagine you're going to say hello to them and how are you and then imagine how the day's going and you can do that as well as a new mum, you're going to go out for the first time maybe to, ta maybe to the, the town or to the shops and you imagine packing a bag with everything you need, uh, the, the, the nappy things and the, the bottle and, and everything, and spare clothes and everything you need, how is your day going to progress and also as the children go to school I remember having anxiety thinking oh I'm going to be on my own my child, children are all going to school so imagine that first day of school what you're going to be going to send your take your children to school and you're going to wave goodbye what you're going to do then plan out in your head beforehand what you're going to do imagine how the day is running smoothly and it's a process I take people through called segment intending and you can just imagine the day going with calm and ease and if different things happen within that day you find you're better equipped to cope with the challenges that arise because you've already you know got a plan of action already you've already thought through how, how the day is going to go calmly and it really helps to just 
cope with the things that happen. Life. Oh, so yeah, if you pl- plan what you can plan, then the unexpected bits don't feel quite so bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's only so much we can know, and it's like, yeah, if you've got everything else organised, then then when the dramas happen, you're like, well, they do. I'm everything else is sorted. It's fine. Yeah, I think it's as well knowing that you have a choice how you feel. Mm-hmm. So life happens, but it's how you react to them, and knowing you've got a choice. So I use three questions in my coaching, which is, um, what do you want? How do you want to feel? and why do you want it? So in any given situation, you can stop and think, okay, this situation has happened, what do I want from it? How do I want to feel? And why do I want it? And that really helps to calm and clarify your steps Mm. progressing through different situations. And this is pretty normal. I think one of the the sort of double-edged sword of social anxiety is you then don't want to talk to people about how you're feeling because you don't want to talk to people in general. Um, yeah. So we kind of don't, we think it, we're on our own with it, but do you find this is pretty common? Is this a pretty normal thing now? Yeah, I think it's completely normal because we're all in completely new situations. We're all out of our comfort zones and everyone has something different that they find difficult um, in each stage of life. And I think it's completely normal. And the more we can talk about it and help each other through it and realise, well, you're not alone. It's the same thing that people are dealing with, but we all might deal with different aspects of it in different ways. I think that really helps feel part of a community. Definitely. I think my my social anxiety often manifests itself as talking too much, particularly in the new situations that I mentioned that I yeah. do not get on with very well, uh, is I talk a lot. And I'm quite chatty anyway in a good situation, but it escalates quite dramatically. Yeah. And then people said, but, but you can't be nervous. You can't be, be anxious and things. Look how talkative you are. And I'm like, no, that's when I'm at my worst. Yeah. <laughs> that's when inside it's a nightmare. Um, outside it just looks like I'm the life and soul of the party but you'll notice I start saying really stupid things (laughs) yeah I think another key element of this is to develop mindfulness I think it's a really useful tool that we can use every day and just stop and think okay what am I feeling why am I feeling it and how do I want to feel and you can start in simple ways like just go outside and look at the see look and see what's around you and just thank oh, it's wonderful I can see the sun and thank you for that. It's wonderful that I'm feeling well and thank you for that. It's wonderful that we've got abundant air to breathe. But just being mindful of how you're feeling in any given situation and and just say, okay, that's how I'm feeling today. And don't beat yourself up. Don't say, well, I shouldn't be feeling this or I shouldn't be feeling that or I shouldn't be feeling down. Just accept where you're feeling. Yes, I'm feeling that. And then say, okay, why am I feeling that? How am I feeling that? Where am I feeling that? Where in your body are you feeling it? And sometimes you find when you go into that feeling, it disappears. And other times you, you know there's a particular reason for why, why and how you're feeling something. So you can just work on that then and find a better feeling thought. What's a better feeling thought? Can you think in that situation? How can you make, feel, make yourself feel better about something? And just keep going and finding the better feeling thought until you feel that that's, you know, you feel it's complete and, and you're where you want to be. That's amazing. I wish I knew about mindfulness. Yeah. many many eons ago and um, I was recently did an interview for the Be Glad movement of, of sort of about the life change I went through over the past five years since my mum got ill and, and sadly passed away and how disastrous my life was before this this horrible thing happened um, and I just think how different things could have been before if I'd had any idea of the concept of mindfulness Um, And even self-development was completely above and beyond me. And that's now my core being is self-development and all the the, the things that come under the umbrella of self-development and what an impact it can have on your life. And I think we we so often think we're, this is, this is who we are and we can't be anything but who we are. And I I hit a moment in my life where I was like, this is not who I want to be for the rest of my life. I, this is not it. This is not who I'm going to be. I don't like this person. I don't like the situation I'm in and make the change. So I kind of want people out there to really don't feel like you're stuck. If you are if you are at a point where social anxiety is being debilitating for you, there is hope and you've given us some amazing tactics and things for that and act on them and realize that you're not alone and you can make these changes and you can have this completely different life. And yeah. we're doing it as part of this whole be yourself, but 
being yourself isn't necessarily being who you are to the outside world right now. It's yeah. digging really deep and realizing who who are you at your core and then using tactics like this to be able to bring that core person out into the real world and really truly be yourself. Um, and unfortunately, social anxiety is one of those big things that sort of puts this wall up and stops yeah. you going out and being yourself. But yourself yeah. is awesome, people. Yeah. Awesome. Get it out there. There's, there's another fantastic process. Um, it's like a little meditation you can do, but you can do it in your head in the moment if you want to. And you say to yourself, I have value. I am valuable. I have value. I am valuable. And you, you say it to yourself and you can bring different things instances if you want to as you're cuddling your baby I am value I am valuable I have value you know I have a worth as you're taking your child to school as your uh, as your children have left home maybe that's another time where people can find it difficult you know I have value I am valuable and think of all a good thing is to write down a book of positive aspects write down all the celebrations and things that you've accomplished in your life how you've helped people how other people have helped you maybe do a book of positive aspects about your children about your family about your spouse all the amazing things and all the celebrations I think we need to celebrate what we achieve in daily life yeah, definitely. We've, if we've put the washing on and we've washed up <laughs> and we've made dinner, that's a massive achievement. <laughs> I get asked so often because because my business is called Supermum Society and people are like, but I don't relate to being a supermum. I'm not a supermum. And then I get talking to them and they're like, oh, actually, yeah, I am quite super, aren't I? And I'm like, yes, you are super. Yeah. And I said, like, what's your definition of a supermum? And I was like, well, have you got kids? And are they alive at the moment? Like, have you? Yes. Had, you had, Round them this morning or forgotten to feed them for, for four weeks then you're fine you do it you're, yeah. you're pretty sweet with me and it, we're not very good uh, particularly bad in the UK at singing our own praises particularly yeah. bad as women in the UK at, at being proud of our achievements we have a, a Facebook community group for super mums where I'm really trying to encourage mums to be like yes I achieved this amazing thing and that could literally be that they got some washing done and ironed and put away before the kid pulled the place apart. Yeah. But that's an amazing achievement, particularly in this heat. Yeah, it's definitely. An and we should be proud, but there's, there is this whole thing of we can't be proud of what we're doing because it makes someone else feel bad, which is stupid. We should yeah. all be proud and supporting each other and proud of each other. Yeah. Another great process I do is a gratitude book. So try and write down as many things. Start off with five things a day and then go to ten things a day of all the things you're thankful for during the days and, and your successes. So, you know, thank you that, um, that there's tea on the table. Thank you I got the children to school. I'm so grateful that um, my baby's happy. You know, different things. And then you, the idea is to read those back and really feel the emotion and the thankfulness and the feeling of joy that you're having. And then with the law of attraction, what you focus on, you will have more in your reality. So you're you're helping to, to grow into that happy, abundant mindset and you're focusing on the good things that have happened during that day and all the positive things and all the Amazing. things you're grateful and happy for. Very empowering. Gratitude is powerful. It's powerful stuff. Well, thank yes. you so much for coming on. It's been amazing. And thank, thank you for getting us in your schedule. Um, I suppose what everyone will want to know is how is best to get in touch? How do you like to be stalked on social media? Uh, what's the best way to connect with you? And I also think you've got a, a cheeky little offer for us as well. I have. I have a special offer for your viewers today. So I've got a four, an amazing four week group coaching program that your um, people can sign up to. And so basically what I'll do is each week I will send you out a the video outlining a process. It could be the gratitude book, it could be the 68 seconds, it could be a meditation around I have value, it could be that segment intending process I mentioned. So I'll send one out each week and then people can have a go, see how they work it and then we can have a group coaching call once a week and talk about how we found it, how we felt it, um, different ideas and we can support each other, get a really feeling of group support. Um, and help as we go through this. So my website is um, keys to, to transform your life .com. My Facebook is keys to transform your life, and my email is elizabeth at keys to transform your life. So I would love to hear from anyone. I've also got um, a free 
daily mindset tips that I email out to people with lots of very good content and tips and processes and all sorts of little things. So that's on my website. Um, you can sign up for, but it's also on my Facebook page. So I would love to be able to help and nurture and, and get a growing community of people to, that'll be really great to support one another. Amazing. Well, I will pop all the links for that down below. Um, and also if you found found this video through a post on social media, you'll probably find that the links are in that as well. Um, and we'll pop details on the website too. We're kind of everywhere. We're everywhere. We're covering all angles here. Um, thank you again for coming on. And um, I really look forward to, to trying out some of your tips before my adventure. We'll go with adventure, adventure on Thursday. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you have found this as helpful as I have. It kind of came at a perfect time for me with my impending trip, but hopefully you have all seen some amazing images on my Instagram stories to prove that I conquered my social anxiety and had an amazing time. So make sure you're following us over on Instagram just in case you've missed any of that. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood and remember, that being a super mom is all about being the mum that you want to be.